This week on the Austin Healy channel, seats. As you know, the, the seats I'm doing are all new. The car didn't come with any seats. Well, it did come with a seat, but I think it's for an MGA. We're not using that one. I bought all new parts, including this nice leather, red on red seat, seat covers. New leather, mmm. On the original seats, there's, it looks like a ice cube tray on the bottom. And this allows the, the cushion to squish more. This foam is pretty stiff and when you sit on it, it you kind of ride up high. You don't sink down into it. And it doesn't feel very grounded. It, it's it's kind of stiff. So um, what I want to do and what others have done is to, to make holes in the, the, the cushion itself to relieve some of that stiffness, uh, make it more like the original. And, and let it squishy so you can sink down into it comfortably. It'll wrap around you, kind of hold you tighter as you turn, as you go around those curves. So uh, what we need to do is decide what size holes and where we're gonna put them. All right, let's do a squishy test. Trying to put the same weight on both of them. See how this one, it folds in. This one just kind of, eh. Yeah, I think that's gonna be nice. Nicer. Should wrap around your butt easier. So let's talk about the seat bases. In the uh, BN1s, they're wooden. I decided to buy them instead of trying to make them uh, simply because they were available and they were cheap. At this point, I could just put the foam on and upholster it and stick it in the car. It could be done. But let's talk about integrity. Integrity is, is when you do the right thing even though nobody's looking. So nobody's going to see this. Why paint it? Because it might get wet. You're driving around in a convertible that doesn't seal very well. The seat might get wet. You might spill your Coke on it, whatever. We're going to paint it because painting it is the right thing to do. I, I just have some acrylic paint and a paintbrush. We're gonna keep this simple. We're gonna do some seat upholstery this morning. Just have to figure out which base is which, put the right foam on top of it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with just a layer of a fabric. What I've done, I've bought Ve from Ikea, or Ikea if you're watching in America, and I'm using that for its materials. I can't find polyester batting over here in, in rolls where it's all one layer. I'm using a, a duvet for the, for the materials. So it has two layers of fabric and polyfill in the middle. And that's basically what we're going to put on here. But I, I have it all separated out. We're gonna start with a layer of, of fabric. And this fabric will, will be pulled around and stapled here. And then this will create, um, it'll fill in these gaps. So when we put the poly on here, it, it has something to press against so it keeps it full. Then we're gonna put the poly on and then another layer of fabric. 
and all these are going to get stapled. Like this first layer will get stapled, stapled right to the edge here. Second layer of uh, will get a little bit further. Then we'll put the leather on, and it'll go a little bit further in. So in the end, you'll just see the the leather on the inside. Pretty straightforward job. You just uh, put it on. You find the middle, and you put a staple in, and then you go to the back and put a staple in in the middle, and do all four sides, and then uh, just work your way to the corners. And when you get to the corners, you have to kind of pull it and put it down. Then the polyfill goes on, the second layer, put it on the same way, then the leather, staples on the same way, and you're done. It should all be that simple.
Most of my upholstery work has been done in the theater and I didn't get a chance to work with leather a lot or at all because it's expensive and you can use vinyl and it looks the same from the stage. But I have to say, working in real leather is very, very nice. It's, it stretches well, it, I don't know, it just feels very, very nice. I'm, I'm happy with how this has come out. Uh, there's, there's a couple little puckers up here, but I think those are gonna stretch out as it, as it um, seats, as it adjusts to the, to the stretching. It, it's cold in my shop, so I had put this on the, the heater uh, to, to warm it up inside the office. Um, it allows it to stretch a little bit better. I'm very happy with this. Um, I really uh, prefer working with this method with the staples and the wood as opposed to the contact adhesive and the uh, little metal clips like uh, the season one. This is, this is more my speed. I'm happy with it. Now I have to do the other one. Although the seat backs are metal, we do get to staple the upholstery onto it using this. Originally they had a piece of wood that would wrap around here. It gets uh, riveted on and then uh, you, you tack into this. Uh, it's very thin. I don't, I, they must have used some very small tacks. We're going to use staples, which will work better. First, we're just going to go through and uh, put some rivets in it you know, every once in a while. I'm not sure, I haven't been able to find pictures of what pattern they use or anything like that. So we're going to just use them, put them in where, where we need them. Now where this overlaps, we're going to cut through both pieces and then uh, it'll just leave the little kerf. That'll be enough to let it settle down into place. After you get the tack strips tacked in place, don't forget to drill out the, the holes. The back of the seat gets uh, a very thin layer of padding. We're not going to use polyfill for that. We're actually going to use this packing blanket. It's about a quarter inch thick and uh, fluffy.
I'm trying to figure out the order of operations for this back. It's a bit of a puzzle. So I'm going to use you as my rubber ducky uh, to explain what I'm going to do as I explain it to you. Hopefully it'll make sense to me. <laughs> all right, so first of all, we have to get uh, the, these little mittens pulled in tight and tucked around the back and stapled. That's first step. Then this gets pulled around and stapled. And all that happens right along here with this pull down of the way. Then we can go back and put the, um, the piping in place. And then we can pull, then we can staple this down to here. Um, and then we can cut it along the edge and then it gets this on top of it. I, I've recently f found the name for this. It's called a hide em strip because you, <laughs> you hide the seams. Basically it's, it's double piping and then you kind of can pull it apart and put staples or tacks along here. It's the same uh, stuff that's used on the on the hood, on the convertible top, uh, around the front, as you, you tack the, the front in place and then you put this to, uh, to trim it out, hide all the staples. You hide them. And then it has these little uh, shiny pieces that go on the end with, with screws. And the screws are long enough, it looks like they probably go into the metal. So that's, that's my order of operations I think I'm going to proceed with. Houston, we have a problem. So to put this uh, hide strip in there, you have to be able to staple in between there. And to do that, I'm gonna take my hand off the trigger. To do that um, with this stapler, you kind of have to really spread it apart. But to, to really spread it apart, you have to fold it on itself. And when it's on something flat, you can't do that. Um, the problem is this is the wrong type of stapler. This is a, a flat nose. There's uh, pneumatic upholstery staplers that are, are long nose. They, they have a bit that sticks out and the, the hammer drives the, the, the staple down a ways. So you have this tiny little rectangle sticking out that you could squeeze down in here 
and, and staple with, but I don't have one. And this is, uh, it's too thin to, to, to put nails in. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go shopping. I'm not endorsing this tool. It's the only one they had, so it was the only choice I had. Let's see what we got in here though. Oh, it's so cute. It's so tiny. I also went ahead and bought um, basically one inch size of the staples. I, I didn't know if these were uh, the same staples that, that I'm using currently or not. But, uh, you know, they're worth... While I'm there and I know which ones they are, I'll go ahead and get some. Lock and load. All right, I'm gonna tighten this up, put some oil in it, and we'll see how it works. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want YouTube to tell you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Thanks for watching, and your support is very much appreciated.